Hello and welcome. Uh, in this clip, we are going to talk about the participation constraint. Uh, participation is related to, uh, but in many ways exactly opposite from, the constraint that we discussed in the last clip, which was cardinality. So just to review briefly, cardinality equals at most and participation our new construct is going to equal at least or minimum. Now, very briefly to review cardinality, we would say a given instance of an employee, a given employee can work for at most one or more than one, which we represent as many departments. So if it is possible for an employee to work for multiple departments, we would represent the indeterminate more than one as n. And if it were the case that an employee can work at most for one department, then we would indicate one right here. And that is cardinality. Okay, so there's our review. And as I mentioned, when we deal with participation, we're not dealing with at most, we're dealing with at least or minimum. So in cardinality, we're dealing with one or more than one. With participation, we are dealing with one or less than one or zero. So our two conditions will be one, meaning yes, at a minimum, you have to have participation. And that we will call mandatory participation. Or no, you can have instances of this entity that do not participate in the relationship. Participation is minimum and that means that at a minimum we can have zero instances participating. So let's make that a little clearer here. Participation is equal to either zero or one optional or mandatory. Okay. Let's look how we represent it in the diagram, because we represent it quite differently than we do cardinality. If participation is mandatory, we will make this line a double line, like so. And if it is not, no, please stop that, uh, we will just keep it a single line. So either single line or double line is what we are talking about here. So let's talk through an example of assessing participation. Now we mentioned when we were talking about cardinality that oftentimes it's not a, a matter of logical necessity, it's a business rule whether cardinality is one or more than one for any instance of an entity participating in a relationship. Well, if that's true for cardinality, it's even more so true for participation. We are going to have to know how the business works and what the rules are before we can represent participation properly. Okay, let's talk through an example. So we have an employee. So the question with participation is, at a minimum, what's the number of departments that an employee works for? So what we, what we essentially ask to make this a little more straightforward is, is it possible to have an employee that does not work for any department? Can we have an employee that doesn't participate in the works for a department relationship? So if it's possible to have an employee who's not currently assigned to a department, then participation in the works for a department relationship is optional or zero and this line right here remains a single line okay that would be the situation for optional or zero at a minimum participation now it's quite possible in a given organization that no no an employee gets hired and as soon as they get entered into the system, as soon as they exist in this database, they absolutely positively must be recorded as working for an department. If that's the case, then we cannot have an employee that does not participate in the 
works for a department relationship, which means that participation is mandatory, which means that these, oops, that means that this line needs to be doubled. And employees' participation in the works for a department relationship is mandatory. Okay? So you'll notice with participation, we don't have the same look across representation that we did for cardinality. And that's basically because the easiest way to interpret cardinality is to walk across the sentence, which leads to the look across representation. With participation, we're asking, can there be an instance of this entity that does not participate in this relationship. Okay. And again, if the answer is yes, single line. If the answer is no, double line. Okay. Let's so there's employee, and let's say for the sake of argument, in this organization, you cannot have an employee that doesn't work for at least one department. So we're doubling this up to say mandatory participation. Let's ask the same question about department. Okay. So is it possible to have an instance of a department entity that doesn't participate in the has working for it an employee? Okay. So can we have a department that doesn't have any employees working for it, that has zero employees working for it? Well, again, it's a business rule. Uh, in principle, we may have a newly formed department that momentarily has no employees, and that could be consequential. But in all likelihood, that would be uh, impossible in, the, in anything but the sh very shortest term. And we'd have a department that you know, we'd create, create and then um, certainly the moment it's created, we would associate employees with it. And so it's probably safe to say that we will not have with any regularity, a department that does not participate long-term anyway in the works for relationship. And so we will leave department as a mandatory participation entity when it comes to the works for relationship. Okay, Participation is a little squishier, perhaps, uh, than cardinality. And it doesn't always impact the design of your database subsequently quite as much, but it's well worth having a handle on. And uh, if you spend a little time thinking about it, I think you'll find it's not terribly difficult. Uh, so next up on the itinerary for these clips is we've covered participation just now. Prior to that, we covered cardinality. Uh, we're going to pull it all together in terms of understanding what these two constraints mean for the relational schema or our plan for the tables that our database will contain and the relationship between and among those tables. So in our next clip we are going to take our, our uh, fully developed entity relationship diagram with all of the constraints represented. So we say an employee works for uh, at most one department. A department has working for it multiple employees. So now we have our cardinality and our participation. Uh, what does this mean for the design of the database tables? Well, stay tuned. That's what we will be taking up in our very next uh, database clip. So in the meantime, study hard, and uh, we'll see you uh, shortly.